Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Carl Hasbrook and in this video we will be implementing our very first search algorithm. This will be a brief first search and I will be um, making tutorial videos at the end of this project. Um, for now, just follow along and everything will become clear as we continue. So the first thing we are going to do is in Unity, we are going to create a new script. I'm just going to call it breakfast. And I'm going to double click to open in Visual Studio. This is going to be a static class. Uh, the reason for that is I want the functionality to be able to call this from anywhere else in the program, mainly the game manager. So I'm going to leave it as a static class and we are going to use async methods for this. Um, the reason for this is with a search algorithm, it's going to take quite a while to complete the search. And that is not a good thing. So if we were to use normal methods, as soon as you were to, in, uh, were to initialize the search, you would essentially freeze your program. And that's not nice. So we are using, uh, or we will be using async methods. Uh, it's really not hard. I will show you how to do that. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to create our data structure. Our data structure is going to consist or uh, consist of two lists. And uh, that is just a placeholder for now. So the way I'm going to approach this is I want a bunch of things to be contained within my list. And I'm going to create that as a tuple. Now, a tuple is used to group different data or uh, um, sets of data within a single variable. It's really useful for search algorithms and things like that, uh, things like this. If you ever used a neural network or coded a neural network, you will be familiar with tuples. And in my first part of my tuple, I'm going to uh, create a byte array. This is going to represent our board. Okay, and in the previous video, I said why I wanted to be a byte array, and it's going to minimize our memory footprint. And the second thing in my tuple, I want to be a list of bytes, and this is going to keep keep track of our moves. Um, you will see later what I mean by that. So I'm just going to copy this into there, and now we are just going to make this a private static variable okay so what the open list is going to be is it is going to hold all our open nodes within our search tree or search pace and you will see what i mean by that with, um, late later in this video and when i create the tutorial series for uh, the theory videos for this uh, I will go into this in detail. So the second data structure is going to be a private static, also a list, but this is only going to be a list of byte arrays. And the reason for this um, is it's going to keep track of all the board states we have already searched. So if I were to go into Unity and play the game, let's say this is our starting uh, position. We do not want to go, okay, uh, we have two possible moves. We can move the three or the six. So now I will move the three. And um, now I have three different moves, but you know, let's move the three again. And now you're back at a board state you were already at. So it is unproductive uh, to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth the whole time. And the nature of a brief first search algorithm uh, makes it extremely necessary to remove nodes um, or not to search nodes you already were at. It's going to save us a lot of memory. So back in the program, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a... Okay, so this method is going to be, going to be public, async, static, and we are going to return a task and within the task is going to be a list of bytes. Now the bytes is going to be the integers or the, um, the indexes of the tiles we need to move to complete the search. So all we, all we are doing uh, with this is we are passing in a board. Now what is going to happen with this is within our game manager, um, 
and so under here with and I'll start we are going to be okay let's create a async method real quick void okay async void and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say var value equals to await and with this I can go prefer search dot perform search and voila so what this is going to do is it's going to wait for this um, search algorithm to complete before it uh, goes on um, with the rest of the method so I'm just going to remove this for now and over here we are going to go through a bunch of steps now I will be using loops for this you can use recursion but for this specific type of um, for this specific type of search I would recommend uh, loops over recursion um, especially within unity within a game engine so we are going, going to go through a bunch of steps. First, we are going to uh, get our current um, node or ball. But we already have that within here. Then we are going to get the possible moves. Now we are going to go through all the possible moves. And we can't do that this yet because we don't we do not have a perform move method. We have no way of performing a move within virtual space. And we are going to do that in a few moments. But let me just uh, complete all the different steps we need to um, go through. After we get all the possible moves, we need to perform uh, these possible moves. And we need to add all of them to our open list right on top of here. And after we have done this, we will enter the loop. And we also need to check for uh, goal state before we go into the loop. Otherwise, it will be infinite. So I'm just going to add that right here. And within the loop, we are going to do exactly the same as all of these. So I'm just going to do it like that just to... Um, Show us what needs to happen within the loop. And right at the bottom here, we need to um, we need to return the moves taken um, to solve the puzzle. So now the first thing we are going to do now is we're going to create the perform move um, the perform move method. Now the reason it's going to be in here and not in utilities is because later we are going to use a star um, and with a star we are going to use a different data structure or a different main data structure and so I think it's going to be better to do the specialized methods within the respective uh, scripts so if you have ever um, coded a simple sort algorithm you would recognize what I'm going to do now so all I'm doing, all I'm doing is I'm returning a game state. Uh, for here, I'm, I'm going to re uh, reference this tuple as a game state. Um, the same, it's going to be exactly the same as within our list of open. So all I'm doing is I'm returning a new game state. So within our perform move, we need to give it a game state we are looking at. And we need to give it two indexes we want to move. So we have a byte which is going to represent our open index and a byte which is going to re represent our move to index. All we are going to do is we are going to switch around uh, open index and move to index. And the way we are going to do that is we're going to create a temp variable and we're going to set it open to our open index so now we have a duplicate of open index now we can switch open index with move to index but you might be thinking this is not going to um, do anything and you're quite right 
because Vs are for indexes, not for actual values. So within, okay, so on top of here, we need a duplicate game state. So what we need to do here is we need to create a new, we need to create a new instance of this board of ours. Otherwise, we will just be uh, manipulating or changing the original board that has been passed into, uh, into this method by the search algorithm. So the way we are going to do that is we are going to say, we're going to create the board and we are going to create the moves. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, all I'm going to do is I'm going to call game state dot item one dot copy to um, board and from index zero. So before we go on with this, I just really um, want to test something within game manager. And that is within this list. I'm just going to remove all of this real quick. And I'm going to create a another. No, I should use arrays for this. So, so let us see what will happen if we were to say x dot copy to, we are going to copy to y and we're going to start at index zero. Now I want to change x1 to let's say nine. And now I want to go through every item within Y to make sure it is still 0, 1, 2 and not 0, 9, 2. So I'm just going to print item. And hopefully this will work. Okay, just for the purposes of this, I'm, I am going to comment it out just to allow us to test. So clear the console. And if we play, zero, one, two. Um, and that tells us that if we were to go into the code and look at this, if we were to change Y or X, if they will be changed separately. Because if um, I were to do this, Uh, and I would change x, then y would have the same value as x down the line. Um, so let's go into Unity and test this. See, 0, 9, 2. And this is the main problem you want to avoid with a search algorithm. You want each instance to be their own. So that is why we are doing what we are doing within this method right here. So I'm just going to uncomment that. I'm going to remove this thing I return null or yeah, the return null I put in there. So now I'm going to do the exact same for moves. And for the list, we cannot use copy2 because copy2 is specifically for arrays. So what I am going to do is down here is I'm going to add game state dot item to within the initialization of the moves list. So now we can start performing the move. So our temp will be within our board dot open index and so we are going to grab the open index um, and we are going to store that value within temp. So now we can change that value within our... So now we can take the move index and put, it, uh, put that value into our open index. And now we are just um, setting the move index value to our temporary value. So now those two are switched, but now we are not completely done because now we need to add um, what index we moved to the moves. And now we need to return a new board state for that. 
So what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say moves dot add and then I'm just going to add the move to index or the move index. Um, yeah, the move to index. And then I'm going to return a new board state, which is going to be a tuple with board and mo no moves right on there. And this is all this method needs to do. Uh, it's not a lot, but it's going, uh, going to allow us to perform moves within a virtual space. So now we have our current board. Now we need to get all the possible moves from it. So I'm going to create a variable. So I'm going to get um, all the possible moves. And this is going to um, return a list of integer, which means if we go to go through all the possible moves, we can use a for each for, for each item within our possible moves. Now we have the index of what we want to move. What I am going to do is I'm going to just add all of them to open. So we are going to create a temporary uh, um, variable we are not going to create a, ter uh, a temporary variable we are going to add them directly to open so what i'm going to say is i'm going to say open dot add and within this is going to be the logic for this before move and for this i need a bunch of variables so the first variable we need is a game state now, we don't have uh, a valid game state at the moment, and we need an open index and the index we want to move to. So over here, it's always a good idea to cache your variables. And what I mean by that is over here, I'm gonna say, over here, I'm gonna say a byte empty block equals to dot get empty block, utilities dot get empty block, and we are gonna pass in the board for that. And now we can access that without having to recall this method every time within the for loop. So in the middle section here, I'm going to say empty block. And we already have the item we want to move. Or we already have the index we want to move to. So we already have that. Now we need a new board state. And the way we are going to do this is we just we are just going to add the board and we're going to add a new a new list of bytes and the reason i'm doing this is the board because within perform move we are creating a new instance of board we do not need to worry about um, manipulating existing data and because we have not performed any moves yet, I'm just passing in an empty um, list of moves. And then with uh, the empty block, the index of the empty block, and then I'm just casting the current possible moves as a byte for our perform moves to um, for our perform moves to be able to do that. Technically, you can change this move index to an integer to make it easier to work with, but for the purposes of this video or for this project, this is 100% fine. So now we have all of this added to open. And we need to check for goal uh, right on top of here. Because if... Okay, so the reason we are checking for the win state up here. So let's say we start on the goal state. After we get all the possible moves from there, um, which is two possible moves, we are going to add our current state, which is the goal state, to closed, which means we are never going to be able to find um, the goal state because it's, it is within closed. So this if statement here is just to prevent that from happening. So after we did this, now we are going to go into the loop. And for this, I will be using a while loop. And I'm going to 
uh, set all these states or all these steps, copy them into here. So now we need to get our current board state. I'm going to do that by, and I made a mistake. This uh, does this should not be a list. This should be a queue. And I'm just going to do that over here. And this should not. Um, This should also work with our check if contains method later on. And the only thing that needs to change is this open.add is going to change to open.nq. So now we need to get our current nodes. I'm just going to call this variable current. So I'm getting the first most uh, game state within this. And then I'm going to repeat the steps I did up here. And it is screaming at me because I already initialized the perform moves and empty block up here. So I'm just going to remove the var keyword from in front of them. So I'm essentially just reusing the variables. And now there is going to be a little change on the way we are going to handle this. Because before we add this game state to the open um, data structure, we need to make sure that it's not already within closed. But before we do that, over here, after we are done getting all of those things, we are going to say closed dot add, we're just going to add the board, the current board. So now we can't return to that board. So now we need to check if this board we performed, uh, we need to see if um, we need to see if that game state is not within closed because we do not want to uh, um, search that again. So instead of enqueuing it directly, I'm just going to add it to a temp variable. And then we are going to run an if statement. This if statement is going, we are going to call the utilities dot check of contains. And this is where our method comes in. We're going to check if our closed contains um, temp dot item one which means the, the, the board we are currently look at, looking at. So now, if it does not contain it, um, we want to add temp to our open list. Okay, so, but before we go all the way here, we need to do a little test right here we are going to see we're going to see if the board we are looking at is the current or is the goal set so we are going to check um, current dot item one if it is goal state we are going to return current dot item two we're going to return the moves taken to get to this specific game state and this is going to run into a um, infinity. So what I am going to do is I'm going to say an integer of... So all this is going to do, it's going to stop me from going uh, uh, into 10,000 iterations of the loop. Now that is a lot and because of the game states expanding exponentially, that is not a lot. It's going to take quite a while for a computer to solve this, especially for a machine um, like mine, which is not as powerful. Um, so yeah, this should theoretically work. Uh, if if that is reached, we get here. Um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to return a null. So I'm going to remove all these comments. And now this should theoretically work. And I said theoretically. 
So for this to be used in Game Manager, we need to change a few things. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to uh, create a method to call from a button. And the way we are going to do this is public async void solve with effort and that's just a little bit of humor and oh yeah this is one of the things i use to solve it when it is done i need to remove this because we are gonna code it from scratch so after we uh, um, okay so from here this is the method the button is going to call so from here we need a few things what we need is we need a new way or a new calculate board. So within our calculate board, this is going to switch to 255. And maybe instead of a list of int, we should uh, change all of this to a byte array. Okay, so calculate board should theoretically give us now the board state within a byte array. And whenever there is a empty block, we will be getting a 255. Okay, so over here, I'm going to calculate the board and I'm gonna pass that into the method. So just to make sure we are receiving the right data, all I'm gonna do is for each our item in data, I'm just gonna print what the computer tells us to move. So, Hopefully this works. And within our solve with BFS async button, I'm just going to hook up the solve with effort. Just for a bit of humor there. Uh, control is to save. And then I'm going to run this. And... If I were to press this now, it's going to return a null. Um, because, yeah, if I were to call it now, it says object is not set to an instance of an object. So let's uh, see where it throws us this error. So within our search algorithm, within the main loop, over here, where we um, perform the move this new list here should not be there we should actually be passing in current dot item two because we basically erased all the moves it took to get to that position so if we were to go into unity right now okay so one of the major problems um one of my oversights is over here within our um while loop over here with our utilities that get possible moves i was still looking at the original board and not at our current board so all i need to do is i need to current dot item one and i just need to do the same for that um and when i need to perform the move i need to perform the move on current dot item one not on board so with that fixed we should be able we should be able to receive the correct data and hopefully the last issue that i completely missed is our check if win should only go to eight so uh, the reason for this is if we were to check all nine spaces in the goal state, the ninth or the uh, eighth index will have a value of 255, which will mean it will return a false every time, even though it is um, the win condition. So with all that issues sorted out, we should have the correct data being returned to us. And there it tells us we need to move eight uh, to solve the puzzle. So if I were to do that, it should return. We need to move index three, this one, 
index six, which is this one, and then index seven and eight. And that does um, allow us to solve the puzzle. And that will be it for this video. In the next video, I will be implementing this into our game. Um, as in, as you, if you were to solve the puzzle, uh, uh, if you were to click on the button, it would solve it automatically for you. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave it in the comment section. And I bid you for a farewell.